Hey everybody, welcome back to Anderson's TV. Uh, we are having a phenomenal couple of days at the Paul Reed Smith factory in beautiful Stephenville in Maryland. I always say all these American towns and counties wrong and everything, so apologies That about was that. exactly right. Brilliant. Well said. So I'm with Jack Higginbottom. Uh, what Jack hasn't done at PRS by the sounds of things is uh, largely irrelevant because he's done everything. He I've did. done a bit. Be been with the company for many decades, uh, former president, current COO, um, and we're really talking to Jack today because A, he's an awesome, nice man, and B, the sort of SE thing is kind of his little PRS baby. Yeah, so yeah, my playground. Tell us, give us, the, give us the sort of like, how did you get into, you know, working at PRS and, and you know, what are the, what's the sort of like the, 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 the 60 second synopsis of your journey? 60 seconds is going to be tough. <laughs> we can do like 180 seconds. Okay, we'll do the 180 right. seconds. So I was, uh, I was a musician around town. I actually grew up in the southeast portion of the United States in North Carolina. Moved to this area just to get better gigs, more gigs, play more music. Met Paul Smith when I was in Annapolis. We, his, his original shop on West Street was about a block from where my apartment was. So we bumped into each other. We got to know each other. He started a factory. And when he started the business was right about the time that I realized I was not going to be the next big thing in music. And I needed to come up with a plan B. Um, and he was nice enough to give me a job. So in 1985, he started the company. I started working for him and building guitars, doing whatever, cleaning bathrooms, just did it all. And over the years, I guess if we truncate that, it would be built guitars, ran the wood shop, managed the factory for a lot of years, had a bit to do with moving the factory to this current location and designing this factory, um, ran sales, did a bunch of stuff inside of R&D, guitar design, ran the company for a few years. And then for the last five or six years, I've sort of taken a role of COO and probably 80% of my value to this company has to do with building up this series, the SE series. Um, and my dream for that series was how do we take, I had at that point 35 years probably of experience building guitars. How do we take those experiences, what have we learned, <clears throat> excuse me, what did I learn from Paul? What are the essences of building a great guitar and apply it to a price point to let more people come to experience what a quality guitar is and to kind of open up the door for the, the, the guitar playing community to become part of the PRS family. And so we have quadrupled this business in about five years. Um, and the cool thing to me is, is while we've grown it, we've also grown the quality. It's raised the quality and just the, the inventions that, and the features and the, um, you know, the essence of the guitars that we're able to bring in at that price point. So I love it. I love the fact that when I first started playing guitar, it was a brutal experience <laughs> on a horrible instrument <laughs> that made me bleed. And I thought it was supposed to be painful. And the thought that people can go and put down essentially that same kind of money and have a quality instrument that's inspirational for mm -hmm. them, is a, that's kind of what drives me every day. Well, let, let's talk about, I, most guitar players will be familiar with uh, the SE range now. It's, yeah. it's pretty established. It sits in that kind of, I don't know if this equates into US price points as well, but in the UK, it's in that sort of 500 to 1,000 ish, yeah. maybe a little bit higher on some of the more exotic models. Yeah. So it's very much something that's maybe in reach for a beginner or, or, or perhaps probably more either becomes your, your first good guitar. Yeah. Um, but what I like about you know, your passion and Paul's passion for this. And I think you see it with some of your artists as well. They're professional instruments. Yeah. So there's no sense that, um, you know, I think I remember, I'm sure when I met Zach Myers, you know, all of his yeah. stage guitars are yeah. just his SE That's right. series guitars. So, you know, and you know, he's playing in front of 50,000 people or more. So I think that's cool, but we've got three, rather than go over the old ones, and there'll yeah. be many, many videos on the Anderson's channel of the, um, existing and, and previous catalog. Three new additions uh, were announced pretty much the week that we got here, That's which right. is cool. So I guess this video will go out fairly soon. Poor old Taylor has got about a billion gig of <laughs> footage to edit up for this week, so maybe it won't. Um, but tell us these three, what have we got? Yeah, so we'll start maybe there. We decided to take the venerable Custom 24 and just elevate it 
and this has been a really fun project. So it's a custom 24 standard 8515s, uh, standard switching, but highly figured quilted veneer, matching quilt headstock, ebony fretboard, fully bound. And the guitar, we also, what I remember of this part of the project is the fun of coming up with colors. So um, Blue Mateo is a color almost everybody's familiar with. That's Matariza. Matariza has been here for decades and he has developed a lot of our stains. Ariza Verde yep. is another one. So we met, we met Matt, you'll see Matt Matt's taking awesome. us around the paint shop uh, in, in the factory tour from yeah. yesterday. Great guy, super knowledgeable, very talented guy. So I went down to the shop floor with him and just picked his brain. And I said, I want to come up with some new colors. I want to, you know, kind of be my teacher. So he taught me how to take different colors of dyes to come up with third colors. And that's essentially what we have mm -hmm. here. Um, and so what is also fun about my job is I get to say, okay, here in this chemistry lab at PRS in Stevensville, Maryland, we are going to make this color. Now I'm going to go halfway around the world and I'm going to go to Indonesia to PT Court and I'm going to open up their cabinets and say, what do you have? Mm. And we're going to find ways of compatibility, like take our recipe and then develop a new recipe with them and come up with something new. And Because cool. I was fascinated when Matt showed us around yesterday, you're, you're using predominantly leather dyes yeah, uh, a lot in of the US yeah, and alcohol. mixing those together to get all this amazing palette of colors. Presumably when you're over in Indonesia, that's a different process, is it? So yeah. what, what's the process they're, over there? They're oil-based, they're largely oil-based and water-based stains. Mm -hmm. um, but you can dilute them, you know, not to get too dry about it, but you can dilute them, you can mix them, you can play with them and make them react like an alcohol stain. Yeah. Um, this particular, uh, color, I have a video, maybe I'll share this video with sure. you at some point. We came up with this by literally, it's a pink, a very hot pink, rubbed out very quickly with a, a very vibrant blue on top of it. And then that just appeared um, magically. So that, you and you've had to train the, the, the team over in Indonesia to be able to, to, to apply yeah. that first level yes. and then quickly yes. enough sand it and put the blue, because presumably- and it's not even you... sanded. It's, right. it, oh, is, okay. it is a training process. And it's a reprogram yeah. of, of your mind. You, know, you have to work very yeah. quickly. If you let the first coat dry, then presumably the second coat goes on differently. That's so right. you've got to get it on in time. That's what, have, right. what have you chosen to call this color? That is violet. Okay. It's an incredibly creative color. <laughs> yeah. Well, after, after all of that explanation, I was expecting <laughs> something uh, different. But okay, so we got a violet finish on the. Other than that, though, custom, the specs are the same custom as a regular Custom 24. That's right. Great guitar, probably the most popular of all the SE guitars. Yeah. Now, I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased. The CE, when that. F I think for many years, the CE lived in the shadow of the custom as just like, oh, it's the cheaper version of right. the custom. And I think it's such a shame that that wasn't, wasn't better explained earlier. Mm. And it's because, you know, the whole tone and feel, particularly the tone of a bolt-on neck guitar, right. maple neck, um, is just different. And it has, it's not, yes, it's cheaper because it's quicker to build, but it's not cheaper for the sake of being cheaper, is That's it? right. So tell us a little bit about the, what um, yeah. SE have done on, the, on, on this so, guitar. I'll go back in history just a little bit. I think we started our first CE bolt-ons in 88. It was probably three, maybe three or four years into the company. And it was an attempt to reach another market, really, is what it was. It wasn't about being a cheaper guitar. It was about uh, talking to another player. Um, the guitar itself, the, the world said, well, it must be less expensive. So we made it less expensive. It actually took longer to make a CE bolt-on back really? then than a custom 24. <laughs> but, um, but we learned a lot from that process and, and just how to make a maple neck properly is, is a whole art form in and of itself. Um, then we, that guitar went away. It came back a few years ago inside of the Maryland line. And it's one of my favorites. I love, I love mm. the CE bolt-on. So as we were kind of playing with, and it started in a way, two guitars were inspirational to me with this, and they're kind of strange. One is the Silver Sky SE. Mm -hmm. The other is the 513. So oh. the five, yeah, isn't that weird? But the 513, so I took a guitar body home. We cut a, what would be a CE bolt-on, but it had a squared off neck joint exactly like a Silver Sky would have. Yeah. 
And I took it to my shop and I had a rasp and literally in a neck plate and I have a grinder. So I ground my neck plate down. I took a rasp and I just rasped the side of the thing and put the neck on, took it off, took it on and just kept taking away material until I liked the way that it felt. And what it ended up looking like to me was a 513 because of the way that the neck comes up, the island is created. Um, if, you, if you put that beside a 513, you'll see what I'm talking about with that return here. Right. Um, what I like about that is it's very strong. Mm -hmm. The contact patch is large, right? So that contact patch is a great way for tone to transfer from the neck to the body. And so it's locked together really, really well. Um, super stable, super strong, but if you turn it around, and this is a prototype, so it has a weird colored neck plate on it. Um, we've contoured this area, so when you're playing, yeah. it's relatively seamless. I, I don't remember the American CE having this roll it's not there. heel joint. No, it's just a square heel It's not there. Really, it's actually, it? it's, it's essentially like a custom 24. Right. Um, so that, that is a big deal with this. What are the pickups going to be on this? 8515. Cool. Assets. Coil tap, yep. volume, tone, yep. three-way, got the trim. Well, I, I mean, this actually is, this is one I think that from 20 paces, you could be forgiven for going, I, I'm not sure if this is CE or oh, yeah. core. Oh yeah, I'm with uh, you. Sorry, SE or, or core. Yeah. That's a great veneer on that yeah. one as well, great color. And this throws back to the original CE bolt-on. Actually, we had a black, we painted the headstocks black <coughs> on the original guitars. And I always just liked that look. I yeah. thought that looked cool, so. No, I think, that looks, I think that looks great. Yeah, uh, Various colors or just the one for now? Various colors. Cool. I'm really bad at reciting colors right now, but we have you we'll know, put a link below. We have a palette. And go find out all the different colors. We 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 experiment with twenty or thirty, and then I can't remember what we choose. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, that is pretty. Isn't yeah. It? Look at the top on that. Yeah. Um, it's not. Is that even a top as such? So this, no, it's a it's a it's just a solid three three hunks of swamp ash. So it's a swamp ash special. Um, this guitar. This was one of my favorite guitars in the 90s when we made the original one here. Thought it was just, they just tonally sounded amazing. I loved the neck shapes. Um, and so we did the same thing similar to the CE Bolt-On. We put a similar, uh, you know, ergonomically correct neck joint on it. It feels nice. Um, I love how many players, you know, go, oh, I love the heel joint up there. And then actually never play any further up Yeah, there. right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no difference whatsoever. There's Basically, two places, I'm talking yeah. about myself here, yeah. obviously. I don't play down here that much, but I always <laughs> look to see what, <clears throat> what does it feel like yeah. there. I'm always checking here and there. It's like my two areas. Um, yeah, so cool guitar. Um, maple board with the- Maple board. The, the end of pop like crazy on that yeah. thing, don't they? And this is, we're calling it eerie blue, and the world is gonna say eerie pop probably, but, we were actually in Indonesia and we could, this color was an accident. It was one of those things where you've got a bunch of jars open and mm -hmm. it was like, well, that's kind of bizarre. That's not what I was trying to do. And you set it aside. And the next day I was like, let's look at that again. That was kind of a cool color. And I was it, at that point, it looked very iridescent. And I was trying to say iridescent to my Indonesian <laughs> counterparts. And they were just like, what is he talking about? I was like, so I was like, I-R-I, -I, eerie. And they started labeling it that way and it kind of stuck, so. It, and so it's a, just a happy accident that the color almost matches the inlays because it's a beautiful kind yeah. of uh, contrast, I think, there. So that, the thing is, is I, we decided to go with abalone because of the color, right. really. Yeah. It was like, man, that would look killer. It so. does look great. And what have you got, 8515s on there with a single coil in the middle? Yeah, and that is a unique voiced mm -hmm. single coil. Um, it has, and again, man, names are tough with me. I think it is an SAO1 or something is what mm -hmm. we're calling this. But it was, so when we do pickups, it's kind of a fun process. We take materials that they have in Indonesia and we have them here and we'll hand wind mm -hmm. pickups. And Paul Smith is our ears, you know, and he'll come in and he'll listen to it and say a little less of this, a little more of that, and let's dial it in. And we'll literally make the pickups here at this shop write it all down, send the prototypes to Asia, and then they are going to go into man, mass production. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that's fab. And, and I, my, my first good guitar was an HSH Strat. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, and, I, and so I've always had this, like, I just think this pickup combination is just a fantastic combination. So many good tones out of this. So, yeah, coil taps as well. Crikey, you can have a ton of sounds out of this, yeah. aren't you? That is beautiful. Um, Pete and I are going to play some guitars. We're also, I think we're going to take one or two guitars out of the cabinet. We're in this kind of like PRS showroom thing here with some historic, really important guitars. We're going to have a little play with those. Jack. Thank you. Honestly, yeah. the, it's, this is an incredible factory, incredible team of people in the most beautiful part of America as well. Um, so your hospitality has been uh, really appreciated. Uh, so thank you so of, much. Uh, all we've of us, enjoyed me, it. Taylor and Pete, you know, we've had an amazing time. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to everyone else. So, right, thank you for watching. Enjoy the playing links below where you can purchase one of these or any other fine PRS guitar from Anderson's Music Company would be good. <laughs> uh, yes, thanks a lot. We'll see you in another video soon. Swamp Ash special. Swamp Ash special. I think that might be my favorite one of the three, but could you just give us some tones, Mr. Pete? I can do. Uh, so you've got a three-way selector switch and then the split, right? Um, so we can go on the neck, pick up here, everything on full, you've got volume and tone. I'm, I'm guessing, you know, it's a good shout, because with three-way, is this middle position it, it just split. the single, or is it all three? Well, I don't know. You just know, this is the first time out. I play these guitars, so, but let's go on the... Into this little naughty uh, 20 XDRX20. You haven't, put, you haven't put the reverb in the front. Have you? I have put the oh reverb in the front. Me, heaven forbid. I'm a naughty boy. Never make it out of here alive. You need to spank me later. <laughs> So if I'm on the neck and I hit that, I'll get this, these two Correct. together. I don't know if that splits though. That's another one we'll have to see in the diagram. Sounds a bit like it also splits that pickup here, doesn't it? If only it? we'd asked Jack before if he left. Only asked. <laughs> but that's what we do, isn't it? We don't yes. ask, we just do. Yeah, there we go. Take some that of that split. beautiful reverb down. Oh. Definitely. That's cool. Yeah, it's very yeah. cool. Um, middle, two together, I would assume. And then the bridge. Yes. That's nice. 
and then I can obviously bring that in. It's kind of it's basic, really like nice. having a five-way blade, isn't it? But, but yeah. by using a three-way with the with, with the, the split. Sort of, well, with the yeah. What additional... would you prefer? I it's, mean, I don't know. It's probably a little bit easier to navigate around with a five-way, but yeah, I don't know. But the aesthetics of it looks great, doesn't mm. it? You know, sounds really good. And it's really nice to play. Mm. I'm not going to lie. This satin finished neck feels great. Yeah. Um, I haven't been up here yet, so I can't tell you about this bit. And I probably never will go up here, but <laughs> it's a cool little idea that, to have that sort of nice rounded feeling on it. Should we have a little... Yeah, you can play that now. Well, I, think, I mean, this is obviously... We're That's not terribly color. new territory here, and unless, of course, the violet color makes an enormous tonal huge difference. huge tonal uh, difference. But this is obviously just a ye old fashioned Custom 24. <laughs> In the opening jam, I'm just using the gain channel of the Sonzera and using volume on the guitar to get cleaner tones. Um, so yeah, I mean, we, obviously you've got six different sounds here. You've got your coil split sounds or your full humbucker sounds. Exactly. So that's um, a three-way blade as well. It's three-way three with, with the coil tap. Absolutely, okay. yes. So it's very, ah, it's very traditional sounding. Sounds a lot like an American, you know, PRS. It's it got does. that slightly. Yeah, they play like it as well. Um, it's got that quite sort of vocal mid-range. Wants to feed back. We're not playing loud in here, are we? Look, yeah. there's millions of, millions of videos of custom 24s out Absolutely. there, so you can go and watch those. But this is interesting. It is interesting, because these are, again, one of my favorite PRS guitars, the, you know, with, the, with the bowl on uh, the, Yeah, the C. Did they do a C22? C-E-S-E. C-E-S-E. I think they did do a C22 at some point. I think point. they did. Mm. And I think, seem I to think, think so. that that was a really, you mm. know, because 24 frets. that's the 24, Who needs 24 frets, Lee? Well, Apart from everybody. When we get onto this blue one here in a minute, who needs 27 frets? Holy shit, there's 27 <laughs> frets on that. Yeah. Wow. We're going there in a minute. Okay, so three ways to select to switch the push pull, which splits the pickups, I would assume. Um, 80, what is it, 85 15s? my brain would react as fast as yours. I saw the bit there where they're going, what chords next? I know. And it's like... Uh, I, I, no, just, no, I don't know. But that's what my I mean. But course, it's I, like, I have no you, idea what I'm doing next. Exactly. So. But that's what I mean. My, I, I just fake it. If you can't make it, fake it, man. <laughs> that's what I say, always say, in every way of life. If you can't make it, just fake it. Get people to laugh. All and my old girlfriends you. got by using that. Uh... <laughs> Funny that, isn't it? <laughs> okay, here's the middle position. Also using the volume and just the gain of the right. of the amp. Oh, yeah, cool, right? That's a good chord. A 
and the same thing, isn't it? It's a good guitar, man. It's a great I'm guitar. It's stuck around my neck as I well. I love it. It's, it's, you can definitely, you know, you can hear that slightly snappier overtone of the bolt on neck versus the, um, the set neck. Okay. Are you going there? Are you going there? Are <laughs> of you course going you can. There? You can definitely hear that. Can you? Can you? Yeah. I mean, I just like it. I mean, the only thing about these guitars is 24 frets. I don't think I've ever got go up here and tiggle the owl, as this it was called. <laughs> That's a new thing, isn't it? Tiggle the owl, because it's up there. <laughs> tiggle the owl. But they're so, all of these PRS guitars have always been so... Or the turtle, um, depending on, no one can ever really tell exactly what the 24th fret on a PRS is. It's the owl, is it's it an owl or a turtle? It's oh, it's an owl sitting on a branch. Yeah. I do see it now. Whereas before, I just thought it was like a turtle swimming along. We have to make that a hashtag, tickling the owl, <laughs> haven't we? I think so. So we um, do a little, do we... Well, no, like, I want to try some other... Okay. Uh, whilst we're here, because, you yeah. know, in all fairness, we can play... These guitars, guitars all day long. Anytime, whatever country, that's the beauty of SE. What we can't play is the uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice, which is kind of Paul's first. Is that what it's well, called? It's not, it's, in fairness, his first ever guitar is the one behind me here. Um, but the first one that you begin to see the PRS story develop is the blue one. You can see now that the some of the, the, the Santana-y kind of shape yeah, is clearly absolutely. born from there. You've got the bird inlays. You've, the headstock is the first time the kind of the, the headstock that we know and love kind of appears. Um, even the even the tailpiece, which Paul uh, milled himself, has really? kind of gone on to become. If you look at like a McCarty t style tailpiece now, it's not. You can see where oh, yeah, the inspiration yeah, yeah, yeah. come up. So let's play that. There's one or two other guitars. The There's dragon, a dragon though. over here that I kind of like. You know, if you want to play. Look at your little feet going like this. Fifty thousand dollars or whatever <laughs> a dragon's going to cost. You know, we want to play that. I do. So there we are. I think we'll just probably let's just. Should we just, should we just jam no, now? We, so we have to talk it. about it. We have okay. to talk about the guitar. Let's right. grab the guitar and then we get back. I don't know how we're going to knit all these videos together that we've done whilst we've been at PRS, but either. You've already seen me talking to Paul about this guitar, and you can find that <laughs> link below, or you're gonna have to subscribe to Anderson's TV and then watch that video when it does come out. But if I remember rightly, That's Paul, Paul, this, was, this, is, this was what Paul considers to be like his first sort of proper build. Uh, he actually sold this and then bought it back from the original. Uh, oh, from, really? from, yeah, he managed to trace it back. In fact, in fairness, I think a dealer actually bought it back and then contacted Paul and said, look, we've got it, do you want it? And anyway. Oh, that's very nice of them. Yeah, so I don't know, is it obvious what the... So you've always got pickup switching happening on the, on the rotary here, the, okay, presumably so no tone one, control. Two, three, four, five, no idea. six, seven. <laughs> seven ways to leave your lover. Is that the song? Or is it 50 be. ways, isn't it? Might be. Seven is enough. Um, yeah. <laughs> one way is enough, really. more than seven excuses to leave your lover. <laughs> yeah, <do> exactly. <laughs> but it's got seven, and you can kind of hear, which I think, in my head, would be like a single coil P90 mm -hmm. sound, because you can hear this little bit of hum. And I turn it. Maybe that's all three This is the This or. is the first. <laughs> Definitely that. I remember, I remember Paul, Paul said he hand carved each inlay with a little saw. Wow. It's insane. Obviously, it is we, insane. we saw it in the factory now, all being laser cut, aren't they? But imagine doing those by hand. And then, and then obviously, um, you know, carving out the fretboard so that the inlays would go into the yeah. right spot. That's a like hummingbird a, with a little. Like hours. Take owls and owls. Owls and owls. Um, okay, so that's the first. And that's the second. Sounds immense, doesn't it? But you can hear the hum's gone away, mm -hmm. so I think we're using... You're over here now. Yeah, maybe. All three. Who knows? 
Wow, I don't know, that's just growly. Good is, sound. Even the colour, you know, that colour like could be on a um, brand new PRS. Yeah, it's like a denim, look. whatever it's called. Yeah. Well, whale blue. Uh, hang on, and then we got that one here. Is that like, that's, that's almost like some, uh, yeah. Thing, isn't it? That's definitely the Pellegrini. Plays really nicely as well, actually. And there we go. So that's the sixth. slightly staggered that there hasn't been some sort of private stock reissue of that as a just, can you imagine? Maybe there think, will be now. I think the PRS fans would go be. mad for that. That's incredible, um, it plays amazing as well. This Love the neck. is number five, serial number number five from, two, uh, number from number 1985. So this, is, this really? is essentially the fifth kind of production guitar. Um, it's custom 24. Uh, it, it, I can see it. Obviously, in the olden days, Paul didn't believe in tone controls because we've got, again we've got volume, the rotary switch, oh. which does the pickup section, and I can't. I vaguely remember this toggle switch was some sort, not like a mid boost, but some sort of change to the mid range character of the guitar. I might be wrong. I think it's that sweet switch. Sweet switch. Sweet That's switch. right. Thank you, Hunter. <laughs> It's got the original sort of pattern carve here, so it's got a slightly sort of narrower feel to it with a little bit more of a, not quite a V, but that sort of slightly... Um... This one is more of like a Paul's guitar, I think. Right. So is that on or off? A bit fatter on the opposite, isn't, isn't it? And if I remember rightly, all the way Clockwise, I think, is bridge humbucker, and then all the way anti-clockwise is neck. It's got that bell thing going on. There's really not many things, you, you, you know, tuners maybe have changed guitar, quite well. a bit, but there's a lot of the essence of this guitar is still reminiscent in a modern you know, custom 24. I mean, that bridge pickup is...
I know we said we wouldn't jam, but you just can't help yourself, can you? This guitar's great, man. Um, I mean, we it need needs to, two uh, more frets, I think. It needs two more frets, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We need to uh, Bruce Lee this video and enter the dragon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd know where I was going with that. And then I think that's, I mean, we could spend another week here if we wanted to, be cool, but I sort of feel like we've got to hit the road. We've got to be we in Martin by in about four hours time. Yeah. But, what a crazy road trip. So anyway, let's, uh, let's, we're, let's just get the, this crazy thing Let's get thing the dragon out. up. I mean, wow. we will obviously close up on this. This is a 2002 dragon. I don't recall, was, was, is this the first year of the dragon, the whole two, 2002? Was that when the dragon kind of concept came out? Because I know... I know I've seen it in the book. <clears throat> I know they've done um, other iterations of the dragon. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing a double neck dragon once. Mm -hmm. So just to give you some perspective here, every single piece either inlaid into the fretboard or into the top here that makes up the dragon, of which there are hundreds and hundreds, are individually cut pieces of, could be abalone or other interesting materials just to get the colors and stuff. So these guitars used to have a retail price of Oh, crazy. I mean, upwards of $25,000, $30,000 ago. And I think now they'll fetch crazy numbers when they come up second hand. Actually, I've just read the back. This, this was a prototype for the Dragon, so this was never even for sale, this one. Rosewood neck, obviously a single cut design. Oh my God, you want me to? Um, I think you should do the honors, man. Just give it a bit of a play. So the lovely Hunter uh, here at PRS Guitars has just shown me there's a, if you want to dive on over to the PRS website, there's the story of the Dragon and it all started the first Dragon was actually 10 years prior to this in, in mm. 1992, um, after a dream that Paul had had of playing guitar with a dragon on it. But yeah. yes, I mean, they, these are insanely collectible now, very rare. Let's have a, go on, give us a quick play, I don't beat. even know what to play in this, but. It just has the same feel, you know, the same sound and the same sort of bell-like sort of... Well, we're also the next one. It's great, man. It's oh, just look. so great, man. It's just... I think, what a great way to wrap up our PRS uh, adventure. Uh, it's been so good to be here, man. It has been great. I've really enjoyed it. Everybody has been so lovely and yeah, accommodating cool. and just beautiful. Right. Beautiful people, beautiful people. Should we... Uh, we should. It's a wrap. It's road. That's it. See you in another video sooner than you probably think. <laughs> <laughs> and See you certainly yesterday. sooner than we want. <laughs> See you later.